All right, Matthew 12, let's just kind of look at it and just uh, go straight into it. You know, there is a place um, for just what I call, you know, the raw word. Um, and, you know, there's all different types of practices. And, you know, for example, yoga is a part of my practice. Uh, cannabis is a part of my practice. Um, and what I mean by practice is really just a commitment to, to practice a spiritual-based life and then ultimately realizing that there's, there, there are forces beyond our own and there's love and there's fear and there's uh, discouragement. Uh, there's all kinds of spirits and, and we have to align ourselves with, uh, or, if, or for me, I have to, uh, my spiritual path is simply just to, is, is to intentionally align myself with a higher intention, you know, love, for example. So for example, like, you know, today, if you're feeling discouraged, you can stay in that discouragement or you can realign to, let's just say, happiness as an intention. And you can choose to, to watch a good movie or maybe you want to call a friend or, you know, it's, it's the realignment. So let's just kind of do what I call, you know, the raw word where you're just going straight into the word. And, uh, you know, I even invest in books, you know, no matter what your, um, your, your practice is, you should have an investment in it. You know, one for me is good books like Make Your Life Worthwhile by, uh, his name is Emmett Fox. And then here you go. It says, um, you know, I, this, is, this is one intention. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy burden, I will give you rest. And then here's another one. It says, uh, have you realized these facts? So this is in his Fox words. And he's just, just doing what I call raw words. It says, in, the presence, uh, in thy presence is fullness of joy, thy right hand, their pleasures forevermore. Um, and let me just show you an example of you know, something that kind of means a lot to me. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you, Matthew 6, 33. Um, so one way to use Matthew 6, 33 is to, is to practice that and say, okay, today, you know, like, for example, it's 7, 8 o'clock where I'm at. It says, Seek ye the first the kingdom, and, and, all the, and all his righteousness shall be added unto you. And what that says to me simply is that we have to put first things first, no matter what that is. You know, for example, today if you run a business, um, and you have to realize, like, ultimately, you have to take care of your customers. And you got to keep your customers first, and everything else is secondary. Well, that's exactly what uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's an example of an, an application of that. Is first things first. So, what is your intention? What is your goal? Like, perhaps your goal is to uh, is to build a business. Well, first things first. You have to have good customers, and you have to have good good product, and that has to be primary. And then the primary, you focus on the primary enough, the secondary stuff takes care of itself. And we all know that. So, but that's uh, seek ye first the kingdom. And I think a lot of times people read Matthew 6 and they, they think kingdom and military and they don't really apply the wisdom of that to other areas. You know, we, we get caught up in the kingdom talk uh, and we ignore other things. Um, here's another example. <clears throat> um, Look unto me and you shall be saved in it. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. And again, how do you apply that? How do you just ask yourself that question? And sometimes the answer is, I don't know. I mean, there's, I just don't got an answer to that, or that doesn't really resonate with me. And once, once you start to, <clears throat> you know, kind of follow your bliss or follow what resonates with you, and uh, that's, that's kind of what uh, Joseph Campbell was talking about. So... Um, and then let's uh, go here. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. One more time. It says, Isaiah 26, 33 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in, trusteth in thee. It's kind of the old, old English. Um, well, to have peace, the mind is stayed on something. Well, today, just kind of be mindful of what your mind is stayed on. You know, you could... Um, and just that's what mindfulness is. Is just what is my mind going back to? What is it? And then perhaps just pray on that. It says, "Come to me, all who um, who labor and are heavy laden or overburdened. I will cause you to rest, and I will ease and re relieve and refresh your souls." You know, one way that you can use that again. These are just examples. There's an infinite way that you can use uh, twenty-eight uh, Matthew twenty-eight. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest and Maybe just let your mind go to um, something where, um, you know, where God in the past has caused you to rest or, gave, or, or was faithful to you. Let your mind go back to that and kind of play with that. And maybe you're just, 
again, this, these are just examples of how to practice the word. Um, it says, uh, take my soul, take my yoke. This is again, Matthew 12. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and humble in heart and, and, um, and you will find rest. And notice there's kind of a Psalms 23 touch here where, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And, and, and as we just let our minds marinate on images that come to mind and then realizing that the fear will also come to mind to kind of take that, the good out and then have to realign. So today's meditation is just really about realigning, 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 having a focus, having a goal. Uh, that's one big area that, that, you know, I guess you want to say God's talking to me about is really to have real clear goals and real clear, you know, John, what are you trying to accomplish today? Where, where, where do you want to go stay with that thought? Uh, because if you're like me, I, you know, I have like, you know, 20 billion thoughts. And sometimes the thoughts are, you know, they're fear-based and a lot of them are love-based. And ultimately, love's going to win. Uh, so we, but we have to align ourselves with that love if we want to win. Uh, it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle you know, maybe use the gentle, what's gentle? that's kind of weird, gentle. You know, we, we like this avenging God of Isaiah. Well, yeah, he's that too. But he's also a gentle, meek, and he's humble in heart. The Bible says in James, it says the, you know, that, that as we move into humility, we also move into grace. And everybody wants grace and power and success. Uh, but at the same time, we got to go, well, <laughs> let, let's, well, let's just, let's do some raw word. Let's, let's look at uh, James and let's just see. Let's see what he says about humility. Um, and just kind of going old school and just learning how to, uh, you know, what they say, kind of get in the Word. And, um, you know, maybe as you stumble upon the, you know, the Word, you, before you go to James, you kind of hang out in Hebrews. It says that, you know, this is, this is uh, talking about Sarah because of faith that she received physical power. Uh, God who had given, given her the promise was reliable and worthy and true to his word. Well, that's exactly why we need to get in the word. That's exactly why we need, we need to really focus on the word because um, it says that, that he had given God, he had given Sarah physical power um, and that he had given her um, because of a promise and that he was reliable. So as we just kind of go back to the promises of God and, and consistently renew our minds and, and again, just Go in raw word. And this is not going to be the most exciting video you see today. It's not going to be the most well edited video you're going to see today. But I'm going to tell you that ultimately, no matter when you see this video, uh, who you are that sees this video, um, you know you're going to want grace in your life. And um, so let's just kind of here you go. It says humble yourself, very, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you and make you or make your life significant. You want a significant life, John? Yeah, heck yeah. Who doesn't want a significant life? Humble yourself. Feel lowly in heart. Be gentle. And then it says here, this is, uh, this, again, this is James 4. It says, but he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit, to meet this evil tendency. This is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace, to the, uh, gives grace continually uh, to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. I mean, just, just kind of let your mind stay on that. You know, maybe you want to kind of wrap uh, a verse that I talked about earlier. It says, um, you know, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Well, what do you want to stay your mind on? Well, how about humility? Because humility brings grace. But he gives us more and more grace um, to meet these evil tendencies. That's why he says God sets himself against the proud and the haughty, but gives grace to the lowly of heart. And those who are humble enough to receive it. Man, I hope I said something today that blessed you. You know, you're going to, like I said, you're, there's going to be about 4,000 Instagrams you're going to get, 3,000 Facebooks, and 6 million uh, thoughts, and good thoughts, and bad thoughts. And man, if I could somehow, you know, let my energy just with the power of the internet interface with your energy and, you know, maybe bring a promise of God that, that maybe you didn't know before. Maybe, uh, like me, you want to find a focus on, you want more peace in your life. Well, stay your, stay your mind on something and then be mindful of when you deviate from that. Uh, and then if you don't know what to stay your mind on, you know, just go to the Psalms and pick a Psalm. Um, maybe, maybe somebody's pissed you off. You know, maybe somebody, um, you know, whatever. Go here, it says, the God who avenges me and subdues people under me. Hmm. Go watch the Avengers and go read Psalms 18. 
say, all right, God, it just says Avengers. Well, I guess you're the Avenger. You're the original Avenger, so let's let's giddy up, you know, and um, I'll be your Huckleberry. What it, again, learning how to just you bring your own personality, bring your own, again, just making it an intention to practice your spiritual path. Um, and for me, it just requires the word. And I'm like, you know what? I want to send light today. I want more love. I want more light. I want more good. Well, those are, those are good intentions. I mean, it says seek ye first. Well, okay, well, I'm going to seek, seek first to, to, to love and send light. Um, and then it says, uh, okay, well, you know, then, then there's going to be darkness that comes against uh, uh, that light. And then just say, but the Lord is my stay and support. And, we, and that's what they kind of call spiritual warfare, is learning how to take the word back to negative thoughts and taking captives, taking imaginations captive. And All right, hope I said something today. Um, Americano417 at gmail.com. Just doing some raw word. Raw word. Kind of close out on this one. It says, great deliverance and triumphs give he to his king. And shows mercy and steadfast love to his anointed. You know, maybe just right there you want to go, anything today that comes against God's steadfast, like, you know, if you have an image of God not being loving or not being gentle, say, all right, you know, today, I mean, the Bible, this guy on the internet, he said, he said literally that God is, God is gentle and lowly in heart, merciful and steadfast love, and, and that, you know, he... When we cried him, he were delivered, and we trusted him. And he, we can lean on him and confidently rely, and and that we will never be ashamed, confounded. And just, I mean, yeah, he's like that guy was kind of nutty, and what was he raw word and showing his books and scriptures? Like, well, yeah, because your mind's going to stay on something today. And my intention is just to share my practice with you, and say something could happen today that can knock you off your intention. And sometimes that intention can knock you off your path for a week or a month or a year or a decade. I mean, one of, the, one of the things about being 40 and not 20 is you can realize, man, I gave in to fear when I was 22, and that deviated me off my course five or six, seven years. You know, and that's the wisdom of being 40, and that's not even being wise. You just kind of learn, you kind of have these experiences where you're just like, man, I, could, I can get knocked off at 23, follow fear, not even knowing I'm following fear. Um, and say, well, what's the answer? To live in, to live in fear of fear? No, the, the answer is to, uh, is to realign back to love. And, and, to, and for me, doing morning meditations, even afternoon meditations, taking meditative walks and saying, all right, God, where am I not loved? Because, you know, it's love and fear. So if I'm not, if I'm not you know, what do I love today? And like for me today, per, you know, professionally, I'm really asking the question, you know, what do I really love to do, love to do? I mean, last night I, I was watching this... Um, this um, kind of a documentary of the UFC, you know, one of my favorite things, and love Dana White and Joe Rogan. Those guys are kind of my heroes. I know it's kind of cheesy to say that on the internet, but Joe Rogan, Dana White, and you know, you got to have heroes. You got to look at people whose lives are matter. And talking about how Dana White and look what he did with that, with the UFC, and and you know, built it. And he just kept saying, "Man, I just love this. I do it for free." And you know, he's a billionaire, and it's. Why? Because he's motivated by love. And today I was, I was, you know, inspired by that. I'm like, well, you know, I'm, you know, I want to be motivated by love. I want to be motivated by, uh, anyway, I hope I said something today. It says, for your mercy and your love and kindness are great. Reaching to the heavens. You know, we can seek love all day long, but there's also going to be other energies that will try to knock us off that, that path. So we have to realign towards love. And so make love an intention today. You guys have a great day. Americano 417 at gmail.com. God will send forth his mercy and loving kindness and his truth and his faithfulness. There you go. There's some intentions. How has God been truthful and faithful to you? Well, just say thank you. All right. Americano 417 at gmail.com.